question is from Nick DeFitness. What are some cues that can help a client who can't hip hinge and keep their back flat? Oh, it's kind of similar, right? Well, mm-hmm. I also gave, uh, so I think this this video is supposed to go up. I think uh, it goes up this week. Uh, I think it was the, I said the, the, the number one controversial tip for deadlifting in rows, and it's the stick your ass out cue mm-hmm. uh, that a lot of coaches don't like. Um, but personally, I, I have found a lot of value in that cue for the average person to get to understand how to get their their keep their back flat. Because the most common thing when someone bends over to do a row or bends over to do a, a barbell, it's all at the back. Yeah, mm-hmm. they round at the back and they don't slide the hips back. And so the stick your ass out and slide your hips back cue has been the the number one cue of for me to get that across to a client. Now, I understand that if you if you have an excessive anterior pelvic tilt and then you ex, and then you stick your ass out any even more, you could be risking some, you know, you know, pinched nerve or shearing in uh-huh. in the low back. Uh, but so it's very as a coach, the the answer or a person listening, it's if it hurts your low back, you're doing it wrong, yeah. right? But if you feel comfortable and that cue helps, it, it's helped out more people than it's done harm. This is where I, too I like using props like a stick to run yes. down the spine and and mainly to then also if you're drawing in your abs and you're pushing your lower back into the stick, like that's a tangible feedback that you're getting. Like okay, I'm not breaking. Uh, there's not a gap now between the stick and my lower back. And also, too, to be able to kind of be close to the wall, but not completely close to where, uh, you know, there's, I tell them to have a soft knee. So it's like just barely flexed. And then I want to try and touch my butt to the, to the wall. Oh, that's a great, that's a great idea. I've actually never used that. Because yeah. again, another, the, the stick, the wall are just feedback tools. It it's makes just it, feedback. Yeah. We did a video, we did a YouTube video. I did a video, I did a YouTube video on the stick. So uh, and I think that's one of the most. I learned that at a certification course back in like 2004 or five, and after that, I carried a PVC pipe around with me everywhere as a trainer. And like almost every, you know, first client or early client that I got in the first week or two, I would bring that out to teach hip hinging because I think that that is probably one of the most powerful. It's hard too, like just to keep those three points of contact. You're putting yes. the spit the, the stick down the back of their spine and it goes all the way from their head down to their butt and you're telling them to keep their hips con- uh, connected to it, their their low back and their upper yeah, back and chin head. tucked and everything, yeah, yeah to and, make it happen. Oh, and then to bend over to grab. It's really the hard. It's really hard to yeah. do. Yeah. Now, why is hip hinging important? Well, uh, when you're bending over to do certain exercises like a barbell row or you're doing a deadlift, or a good morning or stiff legged deadlift, especially, or just because it's a it's a fundamental uh, way of bending over. It's a very important uh, movement, and if you don't do it well or don't know how to do it, your risk of low back injury goes through the roof. So you can't do certain exercises, and you have a higher risk of injury. So this is an important thing uh, to learn. One of the cues that I like to tell people because I would tell people like, okay, we're gonna have you bend over a little bit. Don't have people bend over too much because sometimes their hamstrings are so tight that they are unable to uh, to hip hinge. Right. So I'll tell them, bend over a little bit, maybe 45 degrees, maybe even a little higher. And then I'd say, stick your butt out. If that didn't work, I'd say, stick your chest out. Hmm. Sometimes people understand sticking out the chest and they can't understand sticking out the butt. So I'd say, okay, can you stick your butt out? And they'll, they'll like, you know, you can tell that you don't know what's going on. I say, okay, okay, stick out your chest. Really pull your shoulder back, stick your chest out. But don't stand up. Stay bent over. And then automatically they would get into that hip hinge position. Then I'd say, okay, keep your chest stuck out. Stand up and then bend back over and hold that position. And then they'd start to kind of pick up what that feels like. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on that. That's where I would have like people put their hands behind their lower back like a waiter's bow. Mm. And so that way they are kind of, you know, placing uh, their shoulders in that position by also like folding their hands on their lower back. And then it kind of helps them to you know, maintain that sort of rigid back. It's just crazy how we lose, because if you don't do these movements um, on a regular basis, you'll lose the ability to really be able to do them naturally. Um, and that can cause a lot of problems. And this is true for almost any movement. You got to practice these things and hip hinging is very important.